2020 was a very difficult year for the world, um, but countries around the world handled it very differently, and also central banks and governments have handled it very differently. Uh, Asia has emerged very strong out of the pandemic uh, with very little government support. Uh, so it's setting the region up for very good productive, productive growth over the next several years. And we're witnessing it today with what we're seeing on the ground, companies with their strong revenue growth uh, and the opportunity set really broadening as a cyclical recovery takes hold. So we're very excited um, for the region and being a powerhouse for growth over the next 10 years. Uh, and there are very exciting companies in Asia. You know, Asia is not all, only about the, the middle class consumer. There are very diverse um, buckets of opportunity in consumption, um, manufacturing compute, uh, decarbonization that really excites us uh, over, the, over the coming period. Yeah, so it's actually quite interesting how diverse uh, Asian opportunities have become today versus, you know, when I was looking at this maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, today we talk a lot about the Asian middle class and that is a real theme, but, you know, there are sub-themes within that consumption class. For example, the emergence of the premium consumer out of China. So we're talking about 80 million people who have an income of about $40,000 and above. This is a very premium consuming class where you're seeing high-end, liquor spirits, high-end uh, luxury autos, and all other premium consumer uh, consumption happening with this class. But along the, with that, you've got very eclectic opportunity sets within uh, connect connectivity and compute, which are just leading technology companies in Asia that aren't actually uh, you know, geared into the Asian consumption, but it's just geared into the what's going on in connectivity computer around the world. And then you've got you know, the, um, the move towards decarbonization, which is also happening in Asia. China is looking to uh, move towards a carbon neutral uh, power generation system over the next several decades, electrification of its auto fleet. So there are many of these diverse themes which are quite uncorrelated and unique in nature. We look at um, the portfolio through five major clusters that we have. We have the social commerce cluster through Asia, which are generally um, digital businesses that are benefiting as we m move more of our lives towards a digital format. We've got a cyclical cl cluster of businesses that are benefiting from the reopening of economies across Asia, more of a defensive cluster of companies that are long duration growth, connectivity and compute and decarbonization. And these five clusters through our fund are quite uncorrelated in nature. So we're essentially building a, an eclectic uh, portfolio of ideas through these clusters that have an uncorrelated revenue stream uh, versus one another. So whatever happens in decarbonization, it's actually quite different to what's happening in, in the cyclical part of the, of the portfolio. Yeah, sure. So in the connectivity and compute bucket, uh, we own a company called Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, these, these guys are the leading um, semiconductor manufacturing company in the world. And as we think about how um, you know, computing power is going exponential and proliferating uh, in our lives, uh, all, you know, all the road, roads are leading to two companies in Asia that do all the manufacturing at the leading edge, Samsung Electronics and uh, Taiwan Semi. Uh, we think this market also will grow by threefold over the next decade as our computing power demands rise and Taiwan Semi is in a great position to capture um, over half that market share. You know, the region is very exciting, very vibrant, uh, but has exhibited volatility over time. And you know, in the nature of equity investing, uh, the, you do come through periods of uh, volatility. The fund's characteristics is to build an uncorrelated um, su subset of ideas through these five major clusters, which in itself provide diversity um, but also we've got an extra tool in the, in, the, in the shed, which is we are able to short when we think that the economic environment looks unfavorable or where there's risks emerging over the horizon that we want to protect our investors from. And so the return series over the last five years has been quite smooth um, over the, with the fund with a you know, return over, slightly over the benchmark. There's obviously, um, with a lot of innovation, um, a lot of uh, misinformation, and you know, there are parts of the market that are extrapolating growth, um, which you know, might not fruition in the, in the sense of the actual earnings supporting that growth. Uh, some of that's happening potentially in the um, electrical, electric vehicle space. We're seeing some of these stocks are high quality companies in nature, um, but potentially they're pricing in too much disruption or too much market pricing growth. And there's other parts of the market which we think are under disruption and vulnerable, 
um, which we think, you know, wh whose profit pools will shrink over time, which also give us um, an interesting opportunity to look at those businesses from, from the short side. Look, I think, you know, we are very much advantage being close to the ground of what's going on in Asia, and we can clearly see the region is emerging very strong in terms of the next decade. Asia will be the engine of growth um, for not just the, our region, but the whole world. And also we've seen the amount of innovation happening in Asia, uh, which we are you know, witnessing uh, ourselves. I think uh, based out of Australia, we can see this happening in our, in our time zone. Um, so I just really feel that it's an exciting part of the world that we really should be focusing more on, uh, given it's gonna be the big engine driver over the next decade.